Hey everybody, uh, what's up? So today we're going to go into the uh, X input controllers for our controller file, which is also the CTLR for fighter specific. So if you have a more, if you're more prone to playing fighting games on your main than the regular games, then you want to follow this setup. And this is going to make the majority of fighting games easier to map. Actually, it'll already be mapped out. Street Fighter, for instance. Now, what makes this different than the one that we've done in the previous video is going to remap these two buttons right here. And it's going to remap all four of these, actually. So, majority of your games with this method, instead of these being your primary buttons, it's going to be these two right here. And this will act as your third button. So it's easy to live with. It's not going to mess anything up. But it's a lot easier than going through and remapping all your fighting games. This is going to be an easier, quick way to do that. Now, this isn't going to get all the fighting games, but I'll show you how to get the rest of them. And it's going to be really easy, really simple, and just follow along. So we're starting off with Street Fighter right here. Now, this is from just the default input that we had that we did yesterday which all we did was just map out to make sure that our top four controllers or top two if you're only running two is going to be the xbox style controller so i can just get into my menu here go my input switches and right here for most games these are defaults to work but when you're getting into games that uses more than three buttons a lot of your fighting games will be like that four buttons five buttons six buttons it's not going to map properly so we have our jab punch which is actually going to be down here strong punch will be right here fierce punch will be right here and etc so for this game it's not going to work so we'll get out of this and we'll get back into our main ui and we're going to re-edit our default for these. Now it's going to still work great for your flying games, your driving games, etc. Just any other games, your beat em up styles, your primaries will be up here instead of down here. And that's really the only major change in not fighting games that's going to work. All right, so despite the last video, I want to leave a, a CTLR file in the description below. It's going to be called um, 4PX Input Fighters. I mean, you can make it two players, whatever. That's just what I named it. We'll look into it. And uh, as of right now, there's really not much to it outside of we set the four controllers here. I have the uh, UI menu mapped out and the cancel. And I believe you did that in the last video, which all that does is the UI menu is just if I press these in, it'll bring that input screen out in game and the cancel is your how you get out of the game so i would just be start and select and now we're going to add on to this so you can leave this up and again you can use any text editor you want to but i highly recommend to use notepad plus plus it's free and it'll make this a whole lot easier to see visualize and map out hey now you don't have to do this but i cleared out my cgf my cfg file my configurations file um, I would recommend if you already have a current CFG and you have a semi-working or working main, but you still want to try this out on your controls, um, just rename your current CFG, whatever you want. Name it CFG.BK, backup, just whatever. But make sure you do create a CFG file that's empty. And I don't know if this is even needed or not. That's all that should be in there. All right, go ahead and leave that open. So we're going to come back to the CFG a lot after this. Open up your main UI. And go to your general settings. And we're going to go to your input assignments. Um, first of all, I should mention this. Uh, do make sure that in your main UI that you do have the correct CTRLR file in there. So it would be right here. It'd be line 129 unless you've done any extra editing on your main UI to add or delete more lines, which I never recommend deleting any lines you need. But you'll have the CTRLR and it'll be a 4P underscore X input fighters. You can just rename, copy the name, and drag it over here. And this is on line 130. So I obviously did something to add in our line, but we're good. Make sure you take it and save it. 
get into your main and we're just going to remap our two controllers but we're only going to do the face buttons that's all we need to do no need to change or do anything else player one controls got my player one right here the pf one and you'll want to go through and delete all these first so just delete 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 one through six all right now the uh, P1 is going to be your X button. So that would be that button there. Two, it's going to be your Y button. Or that button. Could be reversed on your controller. Three is going to be the left bumper. And then it's repeat on the bottom. Four there. Five there. Six right here. And then we're going to back out of that. And go down to player two. On player two right here. Once again, delete the first six. All right. And we're just going to repeat the same process. All right, and that's it. That's all you have to do. And for most of your games, they are going to be mapped out. There is going to be uh, one more thing that we will need to do, or a couple of things, actually. But that's the uh, first step. Of course, always save. Make sure you save. Now, this next part may look a little bit scary. It's not. But as I say, always just take your time. We'll go to our CFG, and now we have a default file created. And the only thing from this default is the default file that we want is the ports. So just go through, start from the port here, go all the way down to the other end of the port. Copy it. Go to your X input fighter CFG reason something else and you can find it back here in your ctrlr and do make sure it goes in your ctrlr folder and hold this one right here okay so hit enter make sure you're lined up directly underneath the port right click paste and drop all right, everything is lined up as it should be. Now we hit the save button. Now you don't have to do this next part, but I always do. So I'm just going to delete that, come here, open up my MAME, and uh, let's open up Street Fighter again and see how those buttons look. So we'll go champion edition gets my menu go my input settings and right there it's all change confirmed jab strong fierce kick medium kick strong kick okay so just about any game that follows the uh, street fighter setup those are going to be configured for you. No problem. We can look at Adam Marvel superheroes. Totally different family, but the same concept as far as the button configuration goes. Get that input and everything is the way it should be. Okay, now next we need to change our uh, Neo Geo buttons. And uh, the uh, Neo Geo is going to affect all of these right here. So we're going to go back into our uh, general settings. And this is one reason why you did want to uh, I'm sorry, but yeah. 
So we're going to redo our uh, Neo Geo buttons. So we're going to go back into here. And actually, we need to open up a Neo Geo game. My bad. So I always use Arts of Fighting. Why? I don't know. It just seems to work well for me. Uh, pick any boss you want. I just go for a top one. Because by redoing the configuration, it's going to throw off the Neo Geo buttons. And by doing this one change here, we're going to save it the way it should be for all the Neo Geo games. So input settings. Yeah, so by default, it would be your A button be here, B right here, C up here, and D over here. So this doesn't look right. So I go A, B, C, D. And of course, make sure you delete all that. And go ahead and delete these ones as well. All right, so you got your A, B, C, and D, or X and Y. Okay, same on your second one. All right, everything is all set up now for you, so we can just go ahead and get out of here. Now there's a little trick to making this save all the way across for all the Neo Geo games. And I'll go over this right here for you. So you have what's called the system name and you can put three different things in the system name. So first of all is the short name the ROM name is going to be AOF2. And that will take care of the ROM itself and any clones, as long as you're using the parent copy. If you're using a clone, it's only going to do the controls just for the clone. Uh, come down here and you have our source file. You have your main system and then you have, I guess, your subsystem. But that's a lot of games will run on this. So since we're going to do all the Neo Geos, all you need to do is hit the Neo Geo name. But when you break it down, there's other games under Neo Geos or could be midway as well they have different cpps so you can actually just set it for a specific cpp and that will be useful for some games as well but for this demonstration we want to use the neo geo and i'll see where that goes here so we're going to escape out open up our cfg file i told you i'll be coming back to this thing and we're just going to copy from the system all the way down the system. So we're going to go system to system. Copy that. And we'll go back into our, our um, fighters. There we go. We have our fighter CFG here. And go from the system, enter, and make sure this lines up directly underneath the system. Let's see in. Yeah, I don't need anything up here. All we're worried about is the input. Okay, then I can just drag this back and make sure this input lines up with that input up here. Now, if we leave it as is in the system names, this is only going to affect the art of fighting too. But I want this change to go full across all Neo Geo games. So just type in Neo Geo. Save it, and now this change is going to take effect across all the Neo Geo games. So go ahead and hop back into MAME. And we'll look into, I don't know, Art of Fighting 3. Hit my thumbsticks, give me that menu, and right here, A, B, C, D, all that saved. So now we can just get out of that. Now this next one, we're going to need to do it uh, by game by game basis, but it's going to be super easy. It's going to be Mortal Kombat and we can just take the same file, copy and paste it. And we're just going to change the ROM name every time. Uh, the reason you don't want to do it straight across on Midway or straight across on the source, there's other games 
that will use those controls as well as not fighting games and you can throw off how those are set up so we're just going to jump into uh mortal kombat try to find the first one here there we go oh and you always want to try to start the parent file if it's just a white if it's letters in white that's how you know it's parent if it's in gray, that means it's a clone of a parent. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit our tab, go to input. And yeah, so by this configuration, um, yeah, it looks like I already changed that out, which I didn't mean to if I already did. Okay, try this again. So if we go by this mapping the way it already is by its default with the new configurations, you have your high punch here, your block is right here, and your high kick. So you can already tell this is not going to work for us. So we'll just do what we did in the past. We're going to come up here. We're going to delete all these buttons. Now that block two will actually be a run button in other Mortal Kombat games. We will need to specify that with a different button. So, of course, the way I do it, high button is going to be my X. Block, I want to make that my left button, or you can make it your right button, whatever your preference. High kicks want to be my Y. Low punch, A. Low kick can be... And block is going to be RB, which in other Mortal Kombat games, that's going to translate into a run. Now it's your high punch. I got my second controller here. All right. And that is all set up. Get out of that. And now, of course, like last time, we're going to go into our CFG folder. Go to the MK. And we're going to want system to system. Copy it, come to your X input fighters. And we're going to want to start right underneath this system. Paste it. Make sure it's all lined up. MK. I'm going to delete the BFG stuff. I don't need that here. Line that input up. All right. And we're good here. Now, this part will make this super easy. Copy it from system to system again. Hit enter, right click and paste. And now for MK, we're going to add two. So let's make that Mortal Kombat two. And we that will fix the configurations for Mortal Kombat two. We're going to do that again. And we're going to add three and that's going to fix the configurations for Mortal Kombat three. All right, we're going to do that again. Right click paste. We're going to change that to four. So this will fix the configuration for Mortal Kombat 4. And last, we're going to do this again. Right click. Paste and we're going to change this to UMK3. And that's going to fix the configuration for Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. And then we'll run through and do a quick test on these to verify that everything is functioning properly. Again, you don't have to do this part. I always do. Get into our main. Start off Mortal Kombat. 
All right, block, block. Everything looks good there. MK2. All right, block, block. Block down there. Everything is good. Three. All right, everything's good. And our run is set to RB now. Four, now this is the uh, 3D one. And again, that's all set. And last but not least, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Which I think is probably the best in the series. And I had a lot of fun in the arcades with this one. Okay, and everything is set up properly there. Okay, now two other games or franchises is going to be the Tekken. Uh, Tekken is going to need to have itself remapped as well. But before we jump into that, I want to show you how to change it for the NBA Jams. Now, NBA Jam does take a hit on how the controls is set up going this route. I know it's a popular game for just about anyone. So I'll show you a quick fix on that. And you're just going to do the same method we have been using. Go to your input. And yeah, you know, if you're playing NBA Jam, you really don't want your turbo down here and your pass up here and your shots. So we're just going to remap this. And everyone's preference is going to be different, but this will be my preference. But whatever your preference is, you do it however you want. And also, if you're playing at three players, four players as well, you can go down here and change that as well. So my turbos, I'll just keep them up here. And I'll set it for both my buttons up here. My block, I'll leave that right here. So that'll be my X or my Y and my B button. And my pass steel, I'll leave that as my X and my A. Okay, and then I'll just repeat the process over here. Let's see, shot block. And pass steel. All right, escape out of that. Now, this is going to take care of the uh, button mapping for NBA Jam and NBA uh, NBA um, uh, Turbo Edition. All right, so it's like before we're going to go into uh, our CFG, get our NBA Jam file here. Delete what you don't need. Oh, also, if you're not running a BF, BGFX, then... You probably won't get this right here. All right, so we just want to take this, copy it, come all the way down, system to system. Copy it, and then come over again to our uh, CTLRL and bring up our X input fighters. Throw it down to your system. Want to paste that. And there you go. We have that set up. And now we're going to do this one more time. But this time we're going to add TE at the end. And this is going to take care of NBA Jam Turbo Edition. Now I'll show you something as we uh, test this out too. So save it. Open this up. Now depending on your cab that you're running... You may want to switch number of players on your cab. So, for example, I normally just run a two-player cab. So, I have this set to a two-player game. If it switches, everything looks good. Or assignments. But it goes through dip switches. And on players, you can change that to two. Or four if you want to leave it at four. If you leave it on four, players one and two are going to be teammates. So, if you want to go against your friend... You'll just want to switch it to two players. Then you can just exit out of the game. You can reset the system, and it'll put it in two-player mode. Um, NFL Blitz is going to be affected. Um, those controls will be set. I've already checked that. So the uh, next family of games that we're going to do is the uh, Tekken. So I just want to cover regular Tekken, Tekken 2, Tekken 3, and Tekken Tag. 
it's not super hard we're just going to repeat some of the steps here we're going to modify it to meet those games all right so let's go ahead and get the uh Tekken series finished and then we'll be done with our ctrlr file uh, there's going to be other little fighting games as well so if you have an oddball favorite you should know enough of it by that point that you can go through and fix them yourself but for about 99 percent of the games especially if you're on the fighting end this is going to cover everything so let's go ahead and finish this up so let's go ahead and get started on tekken now with tekken we're going to do something different we're going to map this to the namco 11.cpp and that's going to take care of Tekken and Tekken 2 all at the same time. All right. Let's uh, jump into our inputs. Now your one and two, that's going to be your punches, and those are going to be fine. But then you get down to three and four. That's going to be your left kick and your right kick. So, of course, I'm playing this. So I don't want my kick to be up here. So, we'll just go ahead and change that. Put your three as a. I found the wrong controller. Let's try that again. Okay, and then your four should be B and four. How to get number two done. Let's go ahead and come in and confirm it. Just want to make sure I don't have it backwards. Pause always good to test with. Back up. My left is good. All right, so we are correct on that. Get back in here and I'll go ahead and get player two set up. So we're going to change the LB to your A button forward to your B. All right, and that's it. We can go ahead and safely escape out of this. It's your escape. And we're going to go to the configuration file. And we want to take the button mappings that we've done from here and we want to transfer those over. So let's go ahead and copy all that system to system. All right, then we're going to go to our fighters controller and put here. Paste it. We're going to remove the BGFX. That doesn't apply here. Drag that input to line up with this input. Get rid of these UI warnings. Get this system to match it with this line right here, which will align it with the other system. And Tekken, we're going to rename this to Namcos.cpp. I'm sorry, Namcos11.cpp. Hit your save. All right, now I can jump back into your game. And again, you don't have to do this, but it's just something that I do. Okay, so we have everything that's running on source file Namcos 11 CPP. And you can actually come over here on your source file and you can sort it out. And you can see all the games that run on Namcos CPP or even just any other Namcos in general.
All right, so that's going to take care of our Tekken, Tekken 2. Let's jump into Soul Edge. I don't think it's going to take care of Soul Edge. I think Soul Edge um, button configurations have been set on a different uh, mask. And that's how these buttons get figured out with machines know which buttons does what. Everything runs on a different mask. But for Soul Edge, we can see the same thing. Set your A there. Your B on 4. A and B. Alright, and now we have Soul Edge mapped out. And let's go ahead and escape out of that. Everyone get into the Soul Edge game on the CFG. Now we're just going to drag the ports. So just come down here to the port and copy that. Put it into your fighters. And we're going to align it with the other port. <laughs> Now, when I was talking about mask, that's what these little numbers right here are. The uh, mask 32, definite value 32, and the uh, player tag. So these are how the configuration file inputs what buttons do what. So that's how it knows it's a punch button. That's how it knows it's an action button. All right, now let's get back into our main. Of course, once again, I want to always delete that, and that's just a me thing. Again, you don't have to do that. Uh, let's pick one of these versions of Soul Edge. That's one here. Did that to confirm. All right, and we got our buttons lined up. All right, let's jump into Tekken 2. I haven't played a Tekken 2 game yet. I want to show that that's going to carry on the changes that we've already made in the source file. All right, here we go. Got all that good. Now, the other Tekken games actually run on a different Namco's version. But, I'm going to show you something here. We're going to jump into Tekken Tag real quick. Whenever we originally set our inputs for the uh, Street Fighter style method, that actually already put all the controls in line the way it needs to for a Tekken Tag in Tekken Tag Tournament. So right here is going to be your punches. That's going to be your tag button. Now you can actually edit that to make both of these your tag button, or you can just leave it LB if you want to. Jump in here and show you that. Now, June Kazama, she is very highly underrated. She's only actually been in two games officially. I believe it's Tekken 3 and Tekken Tag. I think she is actually a current, current member now of Tekken 8. If you haven't used her yet, don't sleep on her. She is one bad bitch. Of course, right now she's not because I just can't play. Could be this controller I'm using too. I'm usually using this one. All right, but anyways, let me get out of here. And uh, everyone, that is it. That is how you uh, do your CTRL on the X input controllers, your Xbox, your three duos in the Xbox style clones. And that's going to cover your controls if you are a fighter heavy player, which I am. So that's how I usually have mine set up. Um, in the uh, next video, I want to go over how to do a arcade panel and going with these controllers as players three and four. So if you have some friends over and you don't have a natural four player control con uh, four player deck then you can just plug these in or bluetooth them back on 
and then you can have your friends play in three and four. I'll show you how to do that. Pretty simple, pretty easy. But we're going to have to do individual inputting for the control panel because people's going to have different control panels. We're going to have different arcade styles. So your what your input buttons say will probably read differently from what mine says. But regardless of the button numbers, it's going to work as long as you just input things in the right order and you know what they are. Okay, um, anyways, uh, the base file is going to be in the description below. So anyways, I hope this helped you all out. If you learn anything, like, sub, share, you know the routine. Anyways, I greatly appreciate you all spending part of your day with me. And you have a good rest of yours. Bye.